Welcome back to Strikers Den new episode. We are here today to discuss UFC 302 Islam Makhachev versus Dustin Poirier. We would like to welcome Mr. Hassan today. And if you guys are new to the channel, you go and check the first episode we did UFC 296 together and it's been 6 months we've been chasing him then finally I got him today. Are you excited for UFC 302 Hassan? Definitely is Ishan. Uh it's a big event. Most of the UFC fights are interesting but you know every time anybody from Khabib's camp they fight I'm super excited to see these fights. There's so much technicality and there's so much to learn and especially with your expert opinion it makes things interesting to talk about these. Uh, since since you've been away uh, I have changed little bit the format uh, of some of the podcasts we are nowadays um, uh, I break down the fights according to a few parameters what I actually do is I go through different parameters and I score them and then I try to see on a paper who is a better fighter and who might win the fight it, it really makes my life and for the viewers to make life easy to basically understand that how this might uh, fight might play out so the parameters we are looking at is the fighter's IQ his uh, ability to attack if uh, his ability to defense and their du- durability which mean their stamina their ability to take punishment still uh, carry on and don't give up that is uh, durability and their speed and power these are the six parameters we look at we will give them score card according to what we think we will look at six parameters and i will ask you how you score it and i can score it as well and then we come up with a, a total score card for both fighters and we see who is going to win i'm actually super excited prishan uh, i've been keeping a track of how you are making the new videos and i personally believe this is highly innovative way and i think the statistic plays a big role in any form of sports we see either UFC or any other sports and also i think the approach of being data driven makes things much more uh, not only exciting but you can go into the nitty gritty and if yeah, you just don't yeah. see the physicality of the fighter and you know, what they speak but you can see the stats and you can see their individual ability how they perform and it's just so good of you to come up with this new method of discussing the fight so yeah let's go yeah i mean it's uh, very interesting because uh, once uh, let's suppose if you we a sport particular fighter what happens uh, we are emotional uh, being so we tend to support them and then we really forget actually what their actual capabilities are so if you break it down it makes it easier for you to actually see or kind of predict that what might happen in the fight i think you nailed it because of course you know even though we are huge fan of this sport but we have a particular fire for the person we support in every fight yeah and yeah. that's where when we talk about each individual ability we have to put any form of bias thought on side and we just look at the record and how they are performing and you know that's why you are here uh, with your martial art background you can you know explain things in a much simpler way as well so what do you think which fighter we should pick first to start our parameters assessment and scorecard you know whom i'm going to say this is Islam, where yeah. i <laughs> yes I, i'm going to show a little bit of bias from yeah. my side i'm a huge fan of khabib's fan in fact i got into ufc because of khabib uh, so uh, yeah i think we should start from islam makhache the champion okay so we got we start with islam first okay before we get into it i uh, um just a quick one islam is 32 uh porier is 35 slightly islam is the champion is slightly younger guy um so on other hand he got one loss very f- probably first fight yes so yeah so that was a knockout even that fight he was winning but of course a knockout happened and then on the other side porier Uh, he had 30 fights already he of course lost a few fights as well but he's a legend himself he's been in the game for a very long time he fought very tough guys as well um ko ratio goes with the poirier 
and Islam is not really a KO guy, but he can of course, but he can KO you, he can submit you, he is an all round good fighter. So, okay, let's start with IQ. Sure. I just want to add one point. Whenever you're fighting with the top 10 or top 5, you can never count one person out. Oh, no, you, so, only can't, you can't, yeah. Definitely. Even though, you know, on paper and what we are going to discuss, every warrior is a seasoned fighter himself yeah. as well. So, it's, it's going to be really a good and exciting analysis. Yeah, I mean, you can't, uh, yeah, dismiss one of the fighters never. I mean, it's just about one one shot, one strike, and can he can uh, change the game. Yeah. Light, lights out, how? Lights out, yeah, Osman exactly. Says, lights out. Lights out, yeah. So, okay, s- starting with the Islam, what do you think about their IQ? Uh, well, I personally think uh, Islam has more in his art than his technique wise. And uh, I think. This is somewhere I would allow you to take over and discuss about his uh, last few fight performances. Okay, so uh, when it comes to their fight IQ, how I see it, the, the fighter who are able to basically exe- execute their game plan perfectly and then adopt with the fight if something goes wrong or it doesn't go according to uh, how you plan your fight. So y- your opponent might behave in a different way they do not maybe uh, let's suppose you want to fake fake and strike and maybe they do not basically um respond to your fake so you have to adopt with the fight um or you get hurt or is something totally have how you basically adopt within the fight that really dictates the iq of a fighter let me actually play this one so this particular clip over here Soon as uh, Wolf is coming forward, he actually stepped down and took his uh, legs. He had, because he exactly knew what he's doing, he's coming for a strike and he adopted straight away. Uh, let me take you to the different place now. Okay, now you will have a look. He's step back, step back and a knee. And then follow up with a cross. That is, uh, again, Islam's ability to read Wolf. That what exactly he want to do. He want to pressure him. And then of course he taking his pressure being on toes and then throwing that his knee now again you will see a duck again and took him down again so Zishan I have picked up three key points what you have just explained about IQ number one is the attack and number two is ability. Yeah. Without the ability, you cannot adopt. And the third key point is how well you read the your opponent. opponent. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like this these are the three key points for how you have explained about how we measure the IQ generally. Of yeah. course, there must be more in the IQ science. But as a fighter, thank you for explaining that. So how you score it? How I've seen Islam fighting so far and how he approach every fighter uh, i would score him now what would you score i think him? uh uh i agree with you i will give him nine as well so yeah score for iq nine okay the next one we want to look at is attack his ability to attack so for the attack i'm going to look at uh, so the fight start here so now have a look at how it plays out. The straightaway engage, and he's aware of uh, his distance. He don't want to brawl. He want to keep the long range. He check check, and that off center line throw. The, um, that, this is really actually interesting. You have to basically pay attention on this one. That I'm gonna go very slow here, and then see he knows that. He can get through Charles because if you see hands are high through the middle is slightly open over there yeah so in order for him to actually strike what he's doing actually going central line off central line over here and throwing that cross to catch him so you see how he does it so check he check 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 he's keeping that distance and he move out and catch brilliant. him straight yeah yeah that's brilliant
and then through the middle again he missed that and follow up with a hook hook yeah so yeah attack is good but he is not a pressure fighter he he, he actually wait or make the openings and go through with the percentage of the fights but he is not one shot a one strike ko guy but again he's pretty accurate when he comes to when he comes to islam i see as accuracy rather than the power is accuracy and speed again that is a ability to counter again and he'll keep that distance that's the main thing he work with that distance he don't let people come into that if they uh, close that distance he then he started wrestling so that's why i call him he is all round really good but yeah so when it comes to attack he is not like uh, just on gaichi or chandelier or even uh, you know max all the way basically want to push forward but he want to basically work on the long range yeah what do you think no i think this is good analysis uh i i can see he hasn't knocked out with his punching but in his last fight against volkanos he knocked him out with a one with, kick yeah, yeah with with a single kick and i just feel like this is his game plan he do not want to utilize all his energy uh, within his uh, punching power so, yeah i feel like he's a very strong individual his strength you can see how he control people when he take them down except you know walkner the first fight where he hardly spoke about the issues he had with the hip weight cut personally based on his last fight i feel like he is in between 7 and 8 but i would like your expert opinion how would you score it down I personally score uh, Islam's uh, attack is uh, seven uh, because he's not uh, really all the time basically attacking. He's making you to do something, so he counter. Yeah, so he's not really gonna push you a lot and create the opening and really like try to knock you out. He's not gonna do that. So that's why I think um, I would give Islam attack as a seven. Okay, next is defense. So, how you see his defense? So, I think the only time I've seen some weakness from Islam was his first UFC fight where he lowered his guard just for a short moment even though Khabib was upset when he was guiding him. Uh, apart from that, uh there was this moment with Volkanovs first fight where he had some challenging moments and Volkanovs fought really well. I think it is going to go down as one of the best fight in history. But overall Islam has you, you have never seen any fighter overwhelming Islam or you have never seen any fighter putting Islam into a difficult position. Yeah. I I've never seen Islam win ribbon. Yeah. Within the ring and I think that speaks a lot about how good he is with his defense and probably that's you know one of his strengths how he measures his attack not to commit too much focus yeah. on the defense and then how you said before he react to create opportunities to yeah uh, wrestle yeah so let's have a look for this quickly so what he is doing over here he's keeping his distance he's not letting oliver come into his range keeping his distance and then change the height and so far oliver are not able to catch him and then straight away they get, uh, get into the wrestling and sooner they are getting into the wrestling of course you know dagestan is they are pretty good in wrestling and then he is pretty comfortable with that as well so he's so good with the maintaining the range that sooner the range closes he either he'll grab you or he take you down so it's very uh, less chances of you actually hitting him so that's why but he doesn't have a great like mayweather style head movement which mean if he work in close range like the, the way happened in uh, volkanovski in uh, first fight he can get hit he got knocked out in first fight as well which means that if he get into that range he's vulnerable because he got long levers so 
which means he needs to be in that long range so if he's close is that's not his game so he needs to take him down so that's why he he, he is good with the defense he's really good with the defense he, he knows his ability and he uses it pretty good as well so personally i would give his defense the eight okay so in terms of uh, endurability what you give him um again he's the champion he's been through a lot of fights no actually nobody able to really give him a real trouble um it was uh volkanovski basically, basically first yes. fight and who else i think uh the fight with Arman, i wouldn't say it went too close but it was interesting yeah yeah i watched that fight as well i yeah it was competitive but still i n never saw arman being uh, on top at exactly. any point so yes. he won the fight yes, yeah so but yeah uh, it was competitive because he's really good wrestler as well yeah so but yeah he showed that he can go five rounds i would like to give her durability for eight the reason i don't want to give nine and ten one thing i've seen with islam then when you're pushing forward in the and then you getting to that close range his face expressions basically changes a bit and i you see he slightly opens his mouth and he you can actually tell that he's under pressure so that's why i will think i would give durability as eight i think i agree uh eight is a good score uh also conditioning of most of the years almost all of them just under the bed. how do you with the guy that are coming in the uh, but i must say again the Dagestani fighter he looks like a Dagestani yeah they, 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 they just have i think it's just how they are going to die okay so next one we go speed yeah so what you would see him as in speed to be honest uh i've not seen islam as somebody who is lightning fast yeah he i mean there are occasions when he make quick moves but this is something we already know his biggest weapon is grab yeah so whenever you're fighting a grab he takes the moment he read uh, so what is your opinion so let's have a look uh, uh, this is again uh, Volkanovski and his uh, second fight so you can have a look over here yeah he, he has really quick feet he can move in and out very quick that's where he shouldn't work over here he should just move out from here and that's where Volkanovski wants see this that's over here have you seen that exchange yeah yeah he is quick enough but because he is a slightly longer guy his long hands and if you look this part again you will see that that's where is gonna Volkanovski gonna have success later in the fight this is exactly over here that is the range where Volkanovski had success and that's this is the range where Dustin can also have success as well but you see here still he has a good speed and good base the more his leg speed is better than his hand speed so i personally see speed as eight as well not nine or ten volkanovski if he was the one then i would give him nine or ten but i would give islam is maybe eight and when it comes to the last one power we know he last fight he KO'd Walt with one kick. Yeah, we know that. We also know Charles Oliveira. That was a beautiful uh, right hook. He caught him as well. Uh, but still, his KO ratio is around 20% of his own fight. Which means he is not known for his uh, KO power. So, what's your opinion? So, how I see it, if he is a strong individual. How do we measure power? The so, power uh, who you would see, if I give you an example, let's suppose so in boxing, Mark Tyson, yeah, that's power. Uh, Gaethje, that is power. Chandelier, that is power. You say uh, McGregor left hand with one shot, that is power. Yeah, so that this is how I see the power, which means if you they catch you with one shot, they have the ability to basically knock you out. I personally think power is eight. So Zishan, what do you think is 
the best total score for Islam. So I, with all IQ nine, attack seven, defense eight, and all of them eight, eight, eight. I have come up with a number forty eight. Right, and this is out of oh, six, six, eight. Six, eight. Yeah. Okay, let's go towards Poirier. Yeah, let's do it. That's ten Poirier. Let's have a look. Uh, without going into Poirier's highlights, first of the IQ. Uh, the reason I don't want to play the videos for the IQ because uh, we know what to expect from uh, Dustin. We know exactly his fighting style, um, which means you're gonna see all every time is gonna be exciting. And, but he's gonna have for uh, his uh, style is uh, one way, yeah. So he's gonna come, he's gonna pressure you, he's gonna use his punches, he'll use uh, low kick, and he will basically catch you with accumulative striking, and he will take you out. That is normally that's that's what his style is. So in terms of IQ, what you give him? I feel he is around seven. It's funny we kind of uh, <laughs> having the same uh, score today. For yeah, I give him seven as well. Not because uh, is we like Islam or anything. The reason I don't give for uh, Poirier more than seven because uh, you don't see him being innovative in the fights as in all of the fights are similar. He's gonna come forward and. He will catch you. That that is the constant pressure. That is his game. Which means if you are better striker than him, you will catch him. Yeah. So that's why, in terms of IQ, I don't give him more than seven because he's not gonna change. That's his style. Style is mean. He's already end of his career. He's not gonna change. He's still gonna come with the same. And if he gets success, he gets success. But that's he. So yeah, uh, we did see huge improvement. Uh, in his last fight, uh, but of course, when we measure him with his IQ, with the three metrics we have of ability, adaptability, and reading the opponent, that's where I think, as you mentioned, this thing lack some of it. Uh, because, for example, we saw his title fight with Charles Oliveira. The first round wasn't as bad, but he didn't stop. According to Charles, he knew what Charles was going to do. Take him back, try to submit him, but Dustin failed again. And I think these are the measuring points where you see, okay, has he adopted according to this ability? Uh, he's a great fighter, but like you said, I think he's the seven or twelve. Who? I agree with that. Okay, when it comes to attack. What do you think for attack? Uh, he's a dangerous fighter. Uh, you can see he has big hands, powerful punches. Uh, he is able to knock people out. That's okay. what he has done in his last fight. He knocked a dude who was scary, who was on a winning streak. He came with confidence and. Poirier, the class and the heart he showed. So, I think he he has a pretty solid attack. So let's let me play against uh, Connor, and you know Connor is pretty good with the hands as well. And, and I, I forgot to mention the low kicks as well. Yeah, I Poirier's mean, the, low kicks are amazing. His calf kicks are pretty good as well, and which he used against uh, uh, McGregor pretty well. Okay, now this is a finish. Just have a look here. How how he's gonna. So he caught him over there with a right hook, and that is that that is attack, continuous attack. He will oh, wow. is not one punch KO, but is accumulative. He'll see he'll he'll carry on, he'll change directions, he up down. And I think this is where Islam he can he can put Islam in a difficult spot. If he catches Islam in this spot and he goes how he is beating up McGregor, that's. Uh, Going to be really difficult for Islam. Yeah, definitely. But the thing is, the question is, uh, what is Islam gonna do? Because over here, automatically Islam would uh, go for wrestling. And that's but that's where Poria needs to be. That's where he need to put Islam in the uh, in the corner. Don't let him go out. 
as soon as he want to shoot he need to step back don't let him wrestle and just keep the fight standing that's what he need to do and that's where he's gonna get the success so i personally would like to give him eight what do you think i think i agree with you eight is the right number okay uh what do you think about a defense so we have seen warrior to be vulnerable in the past yeah uh, we saw how Oliveira got through his defenses let's have a look on this one is uh, against uh, chandelier again so you know he's a pressure fighter he want to come forward and he want to hurt you that's what his style is so you see how he comes forward and he covers up he moves around he keeps he uses his elbows and he want to make sure he doesn't get hit but he do he get hit as well so he is responding back he is moving his head maybe some shots are landing some or not but he can land even though he's good at head movement using his elbows controlling and moving his uh, head along with the punches but because of his style he work in that mid range is always vulnerable because yeah he was giving chandler a lot of time to think and he was almost like a target for him he was defending himself but he wasn't doing anything different to stop chandler punching him yeah um you over here you'll see the same thing again you see he he coming forward and he's going back in straight line rather than going on the you have a big cage over there why right. don't go on the side right use your legs you see yeah so that's the vulnerability right over there even he managed to win this fight it shows that how durable this guy is but defense is not as great i would say so i personally would say defense has seven i think i agree and another key point from here is not every opponent is the same yeah so you show weakness to one opponent and you get away with this but when he show weakness to an opponent like islam he will have a field day he'll run through it and he'll take that opportunity and yes. change the entire fight and also because chandler he goes a bit crazy as well and then when you have a sharp shooter like a you know islam then yeah he going to catch you and he's not going to be staying in front of you the defense would be seven so now it comes down to durability what do you think about durability dude warrior is a durable guy i have seen him taking punches and punches and he would still stand his ground uh he's he's got a good cardio he's solid he has a good chin overall yeah again is it so again at uh, the same fight with the uh, chandelier uh, where the fight when all three rounds right now you see how he finishes the fight is very competitive fight chandelier of course is not an easy guy to finish but see how he does it chandelier is actually taking risky he lifts him up Ooh. it was worth it man uh yeah on his back and then as usual as soon as he takes you back then yeah can he do to islam i <laughs> doubt he would <laughs> and i feel like chandler get emotional too emotional maybe, maybe and uh, yeah he's going to get him there all all the adrenaline running through the body and the crowd and the atmosphere generally just messed it up yeah so So he proved again and again definitely is durable guy. So I match him durability with Islam which is the eight. Agree? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh and now the next one is speed. How you see the speed? To be honest, he's not lightning fast. We have seen guys in UFC they they are too quick on the feet, not only on the feet, when they punch you don't see their punch how quick they react. Uh, he he's he's good but he's not the fastest he's more like reactionary as well at times yeah if you see over here it's like his uh, leg speed is not great i mean he doesn't move around a lot so he like to basically you know take his time but he set you up he constant 
being out in front of your face try to create an opening but here's the thing see Gechi was able to catch him there again there was a, a kick as well so again he he worked on percentage percentage mean that he check 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 and will throw the punch so every shot is not gonna be power like Gechi or chandelier so he will make sure that he doesn't waste too much energy again yeah so uh, speed wise again not a great speed either feet or hands so I think uh, you can't give him more than seven I think you made a very valid point that he's a volume fighter as well yeah mostly because as you can see he do not commit himself too much yeah too early he takes his time so seven is a fair assessment finally the power uh, dude oh, I feel like Dustin is a powerful guy yeah but he, again if you look at the stats uh, he's KO TKO percentage 50% so which means uh, what 50% is uh, that he is a KO TKO and you will see out of those 50% majority won't be KO those would be TKO yeah and then of course you have uh, is 27% is submission and this this means are seven fights around 23% so again he is not a guy who will he he will actually wear you down with his constant pressure you'll see against the McGregor you will see all of these fighters most of his fights there's no like one punch KO is a cumulative pressure and and the striking which weighs you down makes you tired and finally he'll take you down i mean he will stop i mean wrapping my jump in whatever so i put him on seven how you feel it and if you especially notice the last fight with saint denise uh dude he took his lights off you, you could see the opponent he's a powerful guy but he couldn't take this anymore and he knocked him out yeah i agree i 100 percent agree um but again if you remember his last fight the thing is his opponent he was a bit tired for some reason and then again that was not one punch even though the last was one punch but he already attacked him a couple of times so is it over here one time here so he's hurt already his body shot three four five he went down you have to again you take him over here yeah. six seven eight no this was just the second round and both of the guys were tired in yeah. fact if i remember correctly the there was few guillotine at attempt warrior went on to knock him yeah, out yeah but again if you he was he, he was seven right <laughs> he was, he was uh, not one punch uh, ko it was a cumulative seven strikes basically and finally of course that was the one that took that guy out you know Zishan you have just changed my mind <laughs> since, since you mentioned seven strikes I was about to give Dustin eight for power yeah but I think you have just changed my mind saying that he took him down after seven strikes I would give him seven seven strike and seven four cool agree yeah so it's seven over here so the total for the distance um, for you come down to 44 so here we go so let me shall I announce on papers Islam Mahakachev 48 distant for you 44 so on papers Islam should win the fight so now comes down to our prediction and how the fight will go what do you think Hassan you give your prediction that how the fight might play out and then I'll give my, my prediction. I hardly see the fight going five rounds. Uh, I think uh, we know the capability of Islam and his grappling. We know the capability of Dustin, how he attacked and which Islam might actually capitalize against him. Uh, in my opinion, the fight will go three to four rounds. and. I can see Islam winning by another submission. Okay. So um, what I think is uh, Justin will start strong as usually he does. Islam will stay outside, try not to engage in close range. Finally, uh, Justin uh, 
start to come close the range and then that's where Islam shoots take him down and yeah make him tired I think uh, they will I think for them they probably will come with the same strategy as Khabib and I see the same thing as well he's still gonna go five rounds he'll go three four round again uh, my prediction will be exactly the same is fight ends with submission and yeah Islam wins by submission they that's what I think as well. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching, being here, and giving your time. And I will see you in the next event and see you again.